Right guys, welcome along again. Obligatory coffee. Right, today I'm going to show you a little rig that I use and uh, don't go anywhere because I've never seen this rig used before and it might just be, it, people might use it, I know that, but I've never seen it in any magazines, I've never seen it in any videos and uh, for me it's a bit of a killer rig so stay tuned stay with it and i'm going to show you how i make it up it's like a, a sub float rig and what it does is it sort of turns your your dead bait into a bit of a live bait gets it swimming but what you've got to do is you've you've got to fish this in some flow so it's predominantly for rivers so what I've got in front of me, I've got the the stuff that you're going to need to make the rig up. And you, you can change it a bit, it's up to you. So what I've got there, I've got like a, a little stem with a, a float on the end of it there. That attaches the, the lead. And it's got a, a large bar ring. I hope you can see that there. On the end of there so to start with what you do is put your braid through that so that's on, on your line and then a little buffer bead like that onto there so that's the start of it there so like a, a little stem little buoyant stem like that look with a buffer bead on there so then what you want to do there's your it's a dreading number three sub float now you, you can use any any different kind of float if you want there's a lot of sub floats on market but what I'll do is show you so I'll thread that onto braid like that so then you're left with that like that so that's obviously gonna lift up off at bottom if there's any weed or debris or anything like that and then you sub float and what I normally do is I like to I like to fish the, the sub float nose heavy to bait and that will all take shape once I get, get into it rig. So then another buffer bead there. So I'll slide that onto your braid. Cut that, cut that bread, it's just a bit frayed on the end. <clears throat> and say it can be a little bit fiddly, but once it's set up, you, you've got it there to use. That's it, that's better. So, there you go. That's the main body of your setup there. So, again, what I like to do is I like to use one of them so that I can clip the trace off if I need to do. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll do a Palomar knot. So get a loop in your braid like that. Put that onto your swivel. <clears throat> so your swivel's on there on the loop of braid. And then all you do is just make a loop like that and then pass that loop through there. Don't pull it tight just yet. 
and then open up that loop and then you pass your quick link and you swivel through that loop and then tease it down like that and then you're left with that that that's normally how I'd attach that quick link like that to your tray to your your braid and it it won't it's never slipped on me on that never ever slipped on me a lot of people will tell you about it look it up Palomar knot and then we'll just cut the excess off like that and then we'll push that buffer bead down and that just covers up your swivel like that <clears throat> so that that's basically your rig there like that and what what that does is so you you cast out and it's like that put the put the trace on or clip the trace on as well that's clipped on and there you go that's the rig So there, you're going to cast that out, your bait's on this end obviously, cast that out, that rests on bottom and then what will happen is, because you, you're fishing in the floor, I'll leave a little diagram in here to show you. So you've cast that out and obviously this is buoyant so this is going to rise up like that and then you've got your, your bait on the other end like that and what you what you want to do with this rig is you want to hook your your dead bait on nose first so that you know normally with a dead bait rig the other way around aren't you you're hooking this hook this hook here into tail at bait and then the other one on the flank but with this one it's different what you do is you hook that into the nose of the fish like that and then down the flank and what will happen is when you've got this rig in water your sub float's going to rise up like this so if you can imagine that's down on bottom and you tight to your bomb you let a little bit of slack line out and that float will rise up like that in flow and then obviously your, your bait is in the flow it's going to flutter about like it's sort of a dying it's a fish in distress it's dying so it's an easy meal for a pike is that and uh, I've had a few fish on it <laughs> over years but I've never seen it in any magazines at all never seen it in any videos I've seen other subfloat rigs, but not this one. But I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know. But I haven't, I haven't seen it before. And the the beauty of this rig as well is sort of your your baits fluttering away in flow with that float behind it. And what you can do is every now and again, your your rods on on alarm. We use a drop arm indicator with this and what normally happens is you know you you can if you haven't had a take in a while what you can do is you you can let a bit of line out and it'll bring it up in water like that and then you can twitch it and it'll dive like that and then come back up in flow and swim again like that like it's sort of you know it'll keel on its side sometimes it depends on how the floor catches it and it'll it's sort of mimicking a dying fish and we all know the pike it's an easy meal it sees it as an easy meal it's there it's struggling in flow bang it'll hit it and what nine times out of ten what you'll get with this rig 
is you, you'll get your, your drop arm indicator will just creep up and then clip off because what they'll do is they'll probably come up from behind it or underneath it grab it and then they turn away like that and then what happens is obviously it, it pulls through your through your stem and then it'll take line and then clip will come out on your rod and then you you've got to take so it's i've never seen it before so it's it's interesting and i want to you know i've been fishing with it for years and uh I've, I've caught numerous you know decent sized pike on it as well so and it's quite an easy rig to fish as well and the the other good thing about this as well is i don't know about your rivers but my local river's got a lot of crayfish in it so there's there's no way you can fish a static dead bait on bottom you just can't it gets annihilated by crayfish and then you you know, you, you've left your bait in for 10 minutes and you, I've had it before in previous videos, you you get a little indication on float and you think, oh, is that a cagey fish? And you pick the rod up and it's still doing it and you, you're like, I've got to strike, I can't leave it because it could be a fish that's just, you know, eat, eating bait on the spot. So you wind down and you try and hit it and there's nothing there. And there were one time on, one of my previous videos, I reeled in a blooming crayfish hanging on to the bait. So I had to try and devise a way of fishing, because I know these areas all pipe, but there's also loads of crayfish. So I'm thinking, how can I get round it? I've got to get my bait up off at bottom, but I've tried like free roving baits and what have you, and they they don't really they don't work anywhere near as good as this so yeah it's it's the it's a method that works it works for me so go on go and give it a try that's it that's basically it that's the rig in its entirety so your sub float there cast out sub float comes up like that the reason why I said nose first to bait is because that'll lift up first, so it's lifting bait as well. And then once your bait gets swimming in flow, then you, you can have a little play around with it. You, you can, you know, leave it for a little bit and then give it a bit of a twitch. So it's like going like this and then let it come back up again, you know, like this. I mean, what what you can do on your river is you 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 can let your bait come right up to the surface and see what it's doing. That's how I I first got to grips with using it. I cast into flow, and then you know rods up high like that with drop arm indicator, a bail arm open, and uh, I let the bait come right up to the surface so the float were pretty much on the surface and uh, I could see my bait was swimming like that and I thought oh hey up a minute that looks pretty good and just as I did that the pike came up behind it and absolutely smoked it straight off at surface <laughs> a good double a good mid double as well and I was like wow I think I might have it on some of you but as I say it might have been done before, I don't know, but I've never seen it. I've seen other subfloat rigs, yeah, but for more aimed at sort of still waters and things like that. So the the other good thing about it as well, if there's a, a pipe coming behind the bait, the the float is in the flow like that. And it, it, the floor's in the floor and creating disturbance behind. And that, that's going right through past the bait and into the fish's face. And you know, they, they pick up on the vibration, don't they? So, but it, it's, it's quite a versatile rig. You can fish it in any river, you know, with sort of a decent bit of flow to it. So, 
get out there and give it a try. Like I say, the, there's other other sub floats on market. You you don't have to you don't have to get that one. You know, the, there's other ones that you can get as well. And you to be to be honest, you don't really need that stem. But I I just like that that stem there in case there's any any debris on bottom. I don't want anything getting in where my braid so that you know it's it's not getting sort of caught up on any detritus on bottom or anything like that and it it's it's clear running straight through that that little that little stem that ledger stem there so that's basically it that's the rig subfloat rig and if it if it's never been done before, let me know in comments if it's been done before, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it hasn't. There might be something similar, but it, it might be a different way that I've adapted it to, to my kind of fishing. But they, they named a, a rigging carp fishing KD rig, didn't they? So if this hasn't done before, been done before, I think I'll name it the SD rig. <laughs> Fame at last. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully, give it a try. Just give it a try instead of straight ledgering. You know, it's your bait's moving. It's not just static on bottom. It's moving, and I think sometimes that can be, you know, a lot more attractive to an hungry pike. It's it's seeing a dying, you know, fishing distress, and as it's kicking round like that. It's giving off all them vibrations towards the fish. And fish is picking up on it. Whereas the dead bait is just laid there on bottom in it. They still work, obviously. But, uh, yeah. The SD rig. <laughs> so, a bit of rig talk this week. I think you've got to do it as well, you know. Because, you know, fishing... Out, out on river catching pike, yeah, we've been doing all right. We've been doing quite well. We've had a few pike. And, uh, yeah, it's it's all good. But you want people want to know how you're fishing, what you're doing, and try and describe, you know, how, how you do it and what you do. And uh, I think uh, some of these, like, rig talks can be quite quite good. You know, people want to see it. So, like I say, there it is. Simple rig. Easy to fish with. Easy to cast. Gets your bait up. Gets it fluttering. In fish's face. Can't resist it. With a little bit of oil into it, bait as well. Get it scent going down. So it'll bring fish up the scent trail. And give it a try. Let me know in comments as well. If you do give it a try, or if you have, in past, I don't know. Let us know in comments how you're getting on with it. So, yeah. The SD rig, <laughs> it's out there, if it isn't already. So, thanks for watching again. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've never seen it before, because I've never. So... And uh, give us a subscribe while you're at it if you're not already. I uh, just want to take this moment to thank all the subscribers. The channel's growing really, really well at the minute. And we get some really, really good comments on, you know, what people are doing and how they're fishing and what they're catching. And I think in not too distant future, we're going to open up the community tab as well. So what you can do is... You can send in your pictures to us and we can put them all up on the channel so you can see them. And I'd like to get a, a good discussion going with all you pikers out there about how how you're getting on and how, how what rigs you're using and what what's your favourite bait or you know what laws are you ca catching them on? You know my godfather, I love them, but I'll fish with other stuff. So yeah. Thanks, thanks to everybody for joining in on this challenge, channel. It's absolutely brilliant. So I'll wrap this up then. 
So I'm going to get out at weekend, hopefully my back's a little bit stiff. But I'm hoping to get out at weekend and uh, I might even give this rig a try. Do a little video on it, show you how I do it. And fingers crossed, get a few fish on bank with it. And then show you that, you know, if you've not used it before, it works. It does work. It, it's quite a deadly rig. <laughs> so... Till next time then, tight lines.